I learned a lot from previous video series about building my brand website in .NET 8. It presented me with a great opportunity to try new .NET features, libraries and more. Going forward, I will upgrade my older projects with the new things I learned. One of the things that I learned is that using Mapster requires less configuration than Automapper while providing the same desired outcome. I often use object mapping to simply copy over values from one object type to another object. For example, create metric request to the create metric command object. And because it's not a great experience to have to do that manually when your objects are large or complex with a lot of nested data, then a mapper can be very useful. Also to take control over the, the outgoing data, what data I want to expose to the consumer. We don't want to return more than is needed and we especially don't want to expose maybe sensitive data like uh, passwords or properties like that. So then we can map the entity which might contain the password property then to a response DTO, that data transfer object, and then leave out that password property. For example, you may of course just map manually, for example, mapping this request object to this command just by initializing a new command and filling that with the request data. And similarly for the response or the output by using the select and saying sub new newsletter. We could even do this, an anonymous type and say id is sub.id. And you could even take it a step further using expression and then you can pass that expression to your select statement and that would work as well. So creating your own mapping logic. An upside of writing your own mapping logic would be that it's more explicit, it's all under your control and you see and know what's happening. A downside would be that you have to invest some time to write it and then some more time to maintain it. So I prefer to use a mapper when I'm working with large complex objects. But I only use them to copy over the exact values from one object to another. Once I need to update values, I'll likely do it manually, so just map the values myself. This is a very small object, but also for very large updates objects, I will likely do that manually. But it also helps me in other ways. For example, here I made a mistake of mapping manually since it was only one value. But then I extended the request object to have the for lead magnet. And I was passing down that value from the front end to the back end. But for some reason it didn't end up in my database. And that reason was because I forgot to update my manual mapping logic. So I had to do that. I had to maintain it properly. So I actually, even for small objects, start prefer to use that mapper just like that. So I know I can safely extend the request object with more properties and then that's going to yeah, end up in my command logic. Of course in there I'll have to make sure that the values are passed correctly or updated correctly. So it helps me keeping my objects in sync. But the other scenario can also play out that you rename properties, add or remove properties and then introduce a bug without knowing it because this mapping, uh, yeah, something failed 
but you don't in, uh, instantly see it. So be a bit careful with mopping, uh, just use it where it makes sense. Do let me know in the comment section below, do you prefer using a library to mop objects or do you prefer to write your own mapping logic? There are ways to validate, to test your mapping configuration to make sure you didn't accidentally introduce bugs that all of the objects are still in sync and so on. So the usage of Mopster is really simple. You have that source object, you call the extension method adapt and then to the destination type. So in my example, that was the request object. Uh, subscribe to newsletter request adapt that object to the newsletter subscriber uh, subscribe to newsletter command it looks like the creators from mobster already anticipated the migration from automapper to mobster and provided that imapper interface to inject but I'm not going to use that, doesn't seem to be too useful for my case. Opening a large .NET 6 project. I just opened the controller and there you see I'm injecting the auto mapper to then use that mapper.map from the request object to the query object, uh, store that in a variable and pass that. But what I had to do to make this work is to configure this mapper. Let's take a look at that. I put that in features, common, and then we had to make uh, create these mapping profiles and that wasn't, yeah, but you had to maintain these. And if you forgot to create a map, then your project couldn't start and so on. And you see there's a lot of uh, create maps in here. And then I had to improvise some more with a shared mapping profile. And then there's some custom mapping going on. So I'll have to find a way how to do that with Mapster. I think that's well documented. So that was quite some work to maintain these mapping things. So I can actually, I could throw out auto mapper, install mapster, uh, throw out this injection and then use the request.adapt and then pass the shelter query type. And that's all I need to do. Then I could delete this mapping profile uh, once I have all of that. And then in the query response, I might have to, there's this project two coming from auto mapper. So mapper.configuration provider. And I also had to inject that mapper so I can throw that out and change this project two to project two type because that's how you do it with auto mapper slightly different, so project to type. And I can leave out that configuration provider altogether. And that's what I'll do. I hope this video was somewhat informative for you. Do let me know what is your preferred way to map objects. Custom logic that you wrote yourself or using a mapper library like mapster auto mapper or maybe another one i don't know about yet do let me know in the comments if this video was informative for you please hit that like button to let me know and subscribe because there are many more useful videos to come if you're interested in all of the code that i built for the brand website video series containing this fully functioning blog with markdown editor file uploader and all of these end-to-end -end modules you can grab yourself a copy by becoming a patreon member or going to the shop and buy it
And if you're interested in all of the code of my most useful class libraries, you can get them for free going to kisco.com, uh, enter your email address and I'll make sure it ends up in your inbox. I hope I see you in the next video.